Hey YouTube and welcome to day two of this uh, door repair that we've done at home in the garage uh, with a small compressor from Super Cheap Auto. So, look, the panel isn't perfect, but honestly, I think it looks fine. Like, we're going to get the rest of it up with a buff. You can see there's lots of little nibs and stuff all through it. And it's a little bit orange peely, so what I tried doing on the first coat was using low pressure, the first coat of clear. I tried going like 20 PSI and I think that's the reason why I ended up getting a little bit of orange peel. I did crank it up on the second coat and yeah, the second coat did go on a lot nicer than the first one. So yeah, just aim for two bar. That's, um, that's my advice, you know, any lower and you probably will just get that little bit too much orange peel and get it on a, just a bit too heavy. Um, so yeah, look, I've got one run in there. It's not like killer it's not massive there's only really one angle that you can see it from hopefully we'll get that angle here somewhere um, but yeah I'm just going to hit that with the tungsten a slight bit of a block and I want to try and knock that orange peel out with a bit of 2000 grit and while we're at it I think I'll do this bonnet too so I sprayed this bonnet um, probably about a couple of months ago now um, and I've got a few nibs in it but that's yeah that's had a long time to to cure up so I'm happy that I'm able to hit that with the tungsten on the nibs, but um, because I just painted this door yesterday, um, what can happen if you use the tungsten without baking it um, when it's too fresh, you can actually pull little bits of um, clear out when you're trying to remove those nibs. So yeah, let's get into it. So this is the polisher that I've got, just another super cheap one, and it's only around $100, so you know, I'm not expecting it to be the best thing on the market, but I've got a feeling it's gonna do the job just fine. Um, it'll, it'll probably be something similar to this, you know, not the best, it's nowhere near as good as the Roops. Um, this is the orbital polisher that I used probably around six months ago now uh, to polish my car with, so it just doesn't have the the large orbit that the Rubes did, but it, it did the job, you know. Um, yeah, so I think I'll give this uh, spot repair that I did a bit more of a buff. That started to dull down a little bit as well. Um, but I've got only one hour and I've got to head out. So I'll just focus on this door for now. And um, yeah, we'll see how we go. So this is my tungsten denibbing block. I think it was quartz branded, but it's actually really handy because I'll, um, I'll denib and because it's got this rope on it or this string on it, I'll just put it around my neck so I might miss something and then I can come back to it. Oh, I must say like last night I um, went to unmask my car. We actually went down to a nice Thai restaurant last night <coughs> and um, I went to yeah unmask this car and when I went to open the door, the whole handle just dropped straight out. So I felt like the biggest idiot. So in the spraying videos of this, I tried removing this end cap and I had a look at it. And then I decided to retreat to YouTube and watch a YouTube video. And someone did a YouTube video and um, I can't remember if he actually said that you need to pull the door trim off, but he had the door trim off. So I thought, oh, you need the door trim off to get it off, but you don't, you just need to pull it forward a little bit. So what I ended up doing when I sprayed this was mask around here, but that'll be fine. It's no big deal. Um, yeah, although I did feel like a bit of a fool. I'm like, you idiot gunny. <laughs> oh, well. I'm sure you have already let rip at me in the comment section saying how easy it is to um, remove one of the door handles off these Corollas. But hey, you know what, man? I learned something. I learned that it's, yeah, very easy. So yeah, that's pretty much got most of the raised sections down on this. I might go a little bit further. You do have to be careful with these tungstens, but they're a very, very handy tool once you get the hang of them for, for shaving runs down and stuff like that. I, I rarely use um, razor blades anymore, so I might use a razor blade if it was like building, building up on this edge and it was still a little bit fresh to use the tungsten, I might just slice it off with a razor blade or something. Um, but for these kind of areas, they're just fine. The main thing you've got to be careful of is not hitting these edges, not lifting it up on a funny angle or getting inside here. That would scratch um, your panel. And as I say, like with the nibs, just, um, yeah, unless it's been baked, don't, um, don't use it the next day. Maybe give it a week or something like that. Now I can see here, I've got little bits of silicon, but you know, that's just part of spraying at home in the garage. I'm not too worried about that. Once you get this thing out in the sun, the only thing I really noticed last night was that um, there was a bit of orange peel through it. So 
yeah, this is all I'm going to be doing on the bonnet as well. Just look for the big ones. I'm, I've never got too fussed about polishing on my own car. Um, and this is yet to be polished. And considering, man, I don't know if... Well, if you don't live in Australia, you probably won't know how serious that West Australian sun is. Supposedly, we've got a hole in the ozone layer. And sometimes, man, you just walk outside and you can just feel that sun just stinging your skin. And that's what it does to... Uh, paint as well it just absolutely hammers it so considering the hammering this bonnet has got that clear has held up extremely well so that's the um, quartz liquid glass and that bonnet looks in it actually looks exactly the same as the rest of the car so just finding those big nibs I'll just give them a while I've got this tungsten out I may as well do it what I've been doing lately is just tungstening and just polishing up the tungsten mark. You can see a fine, very minute little imperfection sometimes, but it's enough to um, take the eye off. And for a daily driver, it's all you really need, I've found anyway. Um, and then like, what I like about this is over sanding. So if I was to sand here and have like a D-nib 2000 mark, sometimes you polish it up get it all done, get it out in the sun. It might look fine, but then two days later, you'll see that denibbing scratch again. If you're just doing a tungsten mark, the worst case scenario is just one tiny little bit coming back. Um, there's a little dob of silicon here, so I just, I dabbed that in. That's what this one is. And again, I'm just gonna do straight up tungsten, polish that mark up. That's all you need to, oh, that's all. So it's gonna be enough to keep me happy anyway. Obviously, you're working in a prestige collision shop, you might want to go to the next level, but if you're working in one of those shops, there's a good chance that you've got a, a, a polisher anyway, and you don't have to do any of it. So the lighting is probably not the best here at the moment. Apologies about that, but hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. Another big one here. Oh, it was funny, I got a comment, um, I sprayed this bonnet of mine, I made a YouTube video on it, and I had a comment from some guy, and he's like, man, why would you ruin the value of your car? And he was dead set serious, like, he's like, I'm a professional detailer, trust me, I know what I'm on about. Where's that block? There it is. Um, he's like, man, any, any car, you've ruined the value of your car, any car dealer or uh, buyer who's got half a brain, We'll get a micrometer and read the thickness of the paint and not buy the car because it's got more paint on the bonnet than what it does on the rest of the car so that they'll know that it's been painted and he's like you should have just dubbed the chips um with a bit of paint and denied them back i'm like man oh, that's that's pretty loose you know <laughs> who i don't know I've, I've never heard of anyone actually getting a um micrometer onto their paint before they buy a car i've never done it i've never seen heard or seen anyone doing it but yeah this guy was dead set serious so that's just a bit of 2000 and that's coming out i mean if it was a bigger run i might want to go hit it with 1200 but i had a look through my sandpaper range i actually don't even have any 1200 so 2000 it is and what's happened with this is yes it's a little bit peelier than that but that doesn't mean we have to go and sand all the orange peel out all we really need to do is just sort of like knock the top off it um, sort of meet it halfway, so to speak. I'll just get a bit of this 2000 grit. And hopefully we'll be able to cut it up relatively quick. So that's one plus side of cutting relatively fresh clear coat is that it's a little bit easier to polish up. So that's another thing you want to do is um, just keep these panels nice and clean because there could be one little bit of grit. Um, dust ain't so much going to do it, but if you get like a little bit of sand or grit in between your sandpaper and the panel, you can be sanding over it and that'll just run a big deep scratch through the panel. So yeah, you don't want that. So just keep it clean. Um, if you're using a bucket, just make sure the bucket's nice and clean. Give it a rinse out. But this is all I really think I'm going to need to do is just give it a 
bit of a light scarf. And as I say, I don't want to completely knock that orange peel out. I just want to sort of meet it halfway. Something like that. So I got a bit of um, bit of a weight off my shoulders after last night. As of making this video, obviously, I published my um, Sada 5000 review, and I was having a few sleepless nights over that review. I didn't want to publish it. I was not looking forward to the backlash and all of that. But it was received quite well by my audience. So yeah, thanks to everyone for that. Um, appreciate your support and the fact that you guys appreciate my honesty so as I say, like this isn't going to be perfect this panel, but it's going to be nice, it's going to look fine I mean, I think it's a good um, I think it's been a good series uh, as far as you know um, spraying in your garage goes Hope you guys have learnt a few things off of it and makes you feel better, <laughs> a little bit better if you do get a run or a bit of orange peel, you know, it's, it's not just you that gets those kinds of things, it's uh, even the pros that have been doing it for years get it. I mean, if I did a job like this at work, I'd be pretty, um, pretty let down by myself, <laughs> but, you know, it changes when you're in the garage. One thing I did notice um, when I was using the liquid glass at work is that it was really hard to cut up. It was really hard to polish. So hopefully this, um, they actually gave me some quartz compound. So hopefully that's gonna cut it up better than the stuff I was using at work. So I reckon that's probably gonna be about it. Have a look at this. Dry it down and have a look at it. I reckon I'm just gonna polish that up and be happy with it, you know? Probably could go a little bit further in a, in a few spots, but we'll make it up with the buff, mate. Yeah, so I wanna put these earplugs in because those buffs actually get quite loud. Just that whirring, sort of high-pitched sound in your ears. Um, I find if I don't protect my ears, I get like um, buzzing ears when I go to sleep and it's just like zzzz, and it's pretty annoying, so. So let's unbox this thing, Tool Pro. got to put it together. I'd say spare brushes are they? Bit of weight to it, which is good I guess. So I think you can flip these around this way if you're a left-hander. I think most buffs are like that. All right, that feels all good. That should work just fine. So, Spray Guns Direct actually send out a few pads as well, and I did notice, yeah, well that's too big. Hopefully, that's gonna fit straight onto this buff, but it should, I'm pretty sure it's pretty universal size. Now, that feels like their softer one. 
So we'll go over it with this one first. Made in Germany, so yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be better than the ones I got from Super Cheap, so I think I'll just use that. Yep. Got a nice bit of speed to it too. That little buff. I'll get that compound I was talking about. So yeah, when I did do the compound video, the cut and polishing video on the rest of this car, I noticed that the compounds that they had at Super Cheap, the, the really more um, DIY spec, sort of not really industrial spec to cut back marks like this. So that's why I'm using these ones here. So these are the ones, Quartz Branded, Spray Guns Direct sent them out and another thank you for that. So yeah, fast cut. Um, one step and then finish, so it goes one, two, three. So then just go by the numbers, the lower the number, the course of the compound. So we'll start off with this one, and fingers crossed, it's gonna cut up nice and quickly. So we'll just get a microfiber cloth there. I'm a bit sort of jammed in here. I haven't got a great deal of room here. So let's see what we can do. So some people like to put the compound onto the buff first, but I usually put it on the panel and give it a bit of a work in with the buff, something like this. Whatever, whatever floats your boat, mate. So that buff's actually quite good. It's better than I expected it to be going on the previous one that I got from Super Cheap. Yeah, so that Tool Pro buff around $100, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and this uh, cutting compound is definitely cutting it up a lot quicker than, uh, well, last time I was using the G6 when I was at work and some of those panels, man, they were just taking ages to cut up um, when I was using liquid glass. Yes, it does need a little bit more of polishing but I'm happy with the orange peel. So you see how all I really did was just, oops, all I just did was just a, basically a quick scuff back but um, hopefully this is showing up. So you can still see some scratches there. It needs a bit more polishing, but if you actually look at the orange peel, it's pretty well consistent. So you don't actually have to go and get rid of all the orange peel. Like you can, as I said, you can sort of meet it halfway. Um, anyway, so we've probably got another 10, 15 minutes of just cutting on that panel. And um, yeah, I'll flick the can back on when I'm just about done.
Radio YouTube. So this is actually day two of doing the cut and polishing on the bonnet and the door of my car. So um, I had to head out yesterday. Uh, I got halfway through polishing that door and then I did have to go out. And as I was down the shop, someone, I, I don't know, I think it was a trolley. It's either that or opening the door onto my car. So I put a big scratch through it here. Um, a very small dent here, but a rather large one here. I guess medium sized one just there. So you know what I'm gonna do with that? Um, I'm just gonna polish it up, get rid of the scuffs. I'm gonna touch that chip up. And then I've actually got a friend that comes to work and he does paintless dent removal. So he'll, he's got like rods and all these kind of little tools. He'll be able to get in behind that and push it up. So that's just annoying more than anything. Um, and I've got a little one here. So that's another thing that's probably worth keeping in mind, depending on the size of the damage on your car, like full retail, um, like full whack, you'd probably only be spending around um, 90 to $100 to fix a small dent like that um, through paintless dent removal. Now, if you were to uh, pay to have that done through a body shop, they would most likely, like that repair is going to come out to about here, they would most likely charge to paint two panels. You'd, you'd be anywhere from sort of four to eight hundred dollars to get that repaired uh, and painted. So, you know, they're not painting isn't always um, the best way to go with certain damage on your car. So I just thought I'd um, yeah, take this opportunity to quickly mention that, that there are other, other options out there like paintless dent removal. Anyway, I'm gonna give that a quick polish and we'll continue on with the job in a few minutes. Rightio, so with this one, I did try um, using the tungsten on most of the bits. Now, I did start polishing this one down here and it was a really big bit of uh, dust landing in the paint, so I did decide to give it a light 2000. Just by hand, I didn't even use a block. And on this door here, uh, as I said yesterday, I had, to I had to head out down to the shop, so um, I only really got halfway through it. But I had a look at it out in the sun, and it really, it would only take a trained eye to pick this job, basically. Like, I can pick it, um, it's not to say that I'm not happy with it, but I can. I can tell that it has been painted and that there is a few bits that aren't perfect about it. Um, a little bit more polishing and then I'll get it up to something that I am like really happy with. Um, and yeah, we'll give it a wash and I'll give you guys a look at um, yeah the polishing stage and the uh, final glaze stage as well. But for now, it's just more um, compounding. I, I reckon that door is going to take a good 10 minutes of just cutting. So just that fast cut stage. Um, and yeah, I do prefer this um, fast cut than the Ferrecla. So I was using Ferrecla G6 previously when I was using this um, quartz liquid glass. But yeah, this stuff does seem to cut it up a little bit faster and it's less messy. So you see all that compound there, that's just wiping straight off. I found with the Ferrecla G6, it just sprays stuff all over the place, makes an absolute mess. Um, but yeah, so we'll just keep going on with that job, see how this comes up. I'll, um, I did promise you guys, or you know, at least say that I might do a um, polishing video on the bonnet of this car, so I may as well get some footage of it for you. So, it's funny, this is one of the steps that like, um, out of all of the, the videos I make, you always seem to get people bagging me about the way I do my polishing, it's weird, like, going into making this channel, it's not something I would have expected, you know, I would have thought there would have been more painters telling me, oh, you should be spraying it this way or that way or whatever, but it's the polishing stage, surprisingly to me anyway, that people always seem to bag me about. I guess it's one of those things that everyone's a bit of a know-it-all, um, you know, the detailers and that kind of thing. They think that, you know, their way is God and yeah, like I had one guy when I did the um, polishing and detailing stages on this car, he's like, oh, you might be a good spray painter, but you're like really, really bad at polishing. It's like, come on, man, I've got the car looking good. Like, what's your problem, really? You know, so, as I said, that's, that's actually polishing up a lot quicker than what that G6 was. Like, if that was G6 with fully cured paint, so don't forget that this, um, this bonnet has been sitting out in that West Australian sun for over a month, copping an absolute hiding, um, and usually the harder the paint, the harder it is to um, polish up, but that's actually polishing up really quite fast. Wow, so that was previously my biggest gripe about the um, uh, quartz liquid glass clear. And yeah, honestly, 
get their compound. That's what I recommend anyway. Get their compound. So, so yeah, I, I will give it a little bit more of a go over this. Pro this probably not fully cut, but let's find another one of these spots. So here's a spot that I um I just hit with the tungsten. That was actually a uh, a silicon spot that I dabbed in. So it, it was like a slight low spot, and I dabbed a bit of silicon in there. And just keep in mind that that hasn't even and this is another one that hasn't even been sanded. So it's just straight off the tungsten, straight to polishing. see it on it's an improvement and yeah it's something I can live with I find you need to get a bit of heat into the panel and you know that's probably going to be yeah it's pretty warm so I find you need to get a little bit of heat into that panel or else it's it's just not going to gloss up a little bit more compounds And there was one nib down here, there's that one too. Yeah, I don't usually polish my own cars, but make an exception on this one. As, as in deep nibbing, but... That looks fine. <laughs> Buffer's actually really good too. A little bit surprised at how good it actually is. That's going from the previous Rockwell one, which isn't great, but it, it's really something that you um, you need both of them for. So you know that'll get rid of the swirl, and we'll go. We'll use that later on in the bed. I include some of that for you too. So you know this is um, a denib here and whilst if you get like really close to it you can say it's not perfect but honestly I don't know how well you can see that you've really got to get it in exact I can barely even see it myself now so there's one right there just here and there's I can barely even see the other one there was one like up on one of these lines here somewhere yeah, I can't even see it anymore. <laughs> there it is. It's right there. So you can barely see it. So it's not quite perfect. You know, as I was saying, if you're working in a um, a prestige body shop, you may want to um, give it a bit of a sand or something, and depending on the, the quality that you're looking for. But for me, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Anyway, I'm going to keep uh, buffing up, and I'll take you guys through the next stage. So I've just spent about 10 minutes just giving this door a good hard buff in. I knew the parts that I had to focus on and that was really mainly around this side but I did give the uh, rest of the door a good buff in. So I'll give it a wipe off and give you guys a look at it and see where we're up to. So that's just the cutting stage and look I can't say it enough man like that buff it's killer. It's got a nice amount of speed to it, variable speed. Um, and really a nice amount of torque to it so you can push a bit of pressure on it and it just digs in and yeah it does a really good job so we'll get this torch over here and have a look at how we're looking still a little bit scratchy down here but honestly something that I can probably live with you know I might just give that a little bit more buff this, yeah, the HS clears usually are a lot harder to buff than your MS clears. So just keep that in mind. Um, in a perfect world, I'd have some 3000 grit, some Trizact or something like that. So I would have hit it with 2000 and then 3000 next, just so that you're taking it up to that next stage before you start polishing. Um, also, I'm just going to get that little mini polisher and buff up here a little bit better, but 
I'm not going to get too fussed if there's a very slight edge. It's something that, um, as I say, by the time you're actually standing up when you're looking at it like that, it looks fine. So whenever you're buffing around door handles, especially the plastic ones, it's definitely worth putting a piece of masking tape over it. I have melted them before, thinking I was being careful, but obviously not careful enough. Car's going in 10 minutes, Gunny's on the buff and melts through a door handle. It does happen, happens to the best of us. Um, so yeah, as I said for that, I'm just gonna go this gutless little Rockwell thing. Yeah, so when I got this, there was two. There was like, I think it was, this is the 18 volt one. I think it was like 14 volt or something for the other one. And I thought, oh yeah, I'll go the 18 volt one. Should have a bit more oomph in it, but really even this thing, man, you can just see it's really not very fast. Doesn't have a great deal of torque to it either. So I can see a bit of an edge there. It's not quite perfect, but it's something that I can live with. It's one of those things if it did need to be a bit better, I could sort of like 2,000 it down. Do a 2,000 grit and spend a bit more time on the polish, but that's gonna keep me happy. So yeah, next stage is, yeah, just wipe most of this compound off. Actually, I forgot, I need to give, I wanted to give that a little bit more of a buff in. So I'll give you guys a look at that stage just for a minute, just, I don't know. It is a polishing vid, give you guys a look at what I'm doing. So yeah, you don't want to put too much on, but you still need a bit in there, or else it's not really going to do much. And yeah, these um, these polishing pads I got from Spray Guns Direct, they're actually quite good. The ones I got from Super Cheap, um, they just started expanding and melting, basically. So it's systematically type thing, you know, you saw a section, move on to the next section. Obviously you don't want to hang in one part for too long, or else it's going to start um, melting the paint. And careful when buffing these lines in, sometimes you're better off leaving it a little bit unperfect than cutting through, you know what I mean? So I can actually slightly see that edge a little bit there, but as I said, it's something that I can live with. It's only really the trained eye that's gonna notice it. Um, and yeah, for a daily driver, it's gonna be just fine. As I say, look, there's a couple of little bits of silicon here, here. There is a few bits all through this panel, but um, you know, if I really wanted to, I could dab them in um, or just re-clear the panel. But um, yes, yeah, it's something that I'm gonna live with. I'm happy with it, it looks fine. And I would imagine that most people that um, you know, fixing some damage on a daily driver would be happy with something like that, you know. Yeah, polishing isn't really my favourite stage. <laughs> it can be quite time consuming. But rewarding, on the other hand, you know, when you get it all looking nice. funny like you get these detailers and they'll be like oh man you're using the bus too fast or you, you put too much compound on or whatever it is and it's like man it works for me you know <laughs> I get my job done like I don't see why you care that much you use your products and methods and I'll use mine I get the results so I'm happy with as long as you get your results who cares you know? So honestly, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> I've, I've held that cutting pad in my hand for long enough. 
And next stage, so they had this red one. I'm obviously guessing that that's going to be a, um, a glazing pad. So I will do it as a three stage. So that's, that's a bit softer, this red one. Um, and which was the next one? Yeah, so 2000 was the second one and this must be the final finish. So you could probably even do this as a four stage if you really wanted to. So you go the, the stage one, stage two, stage three, and then even a wax. Like I've got some, um, some good wax down there. Yeah, the Meguiar's Canuba wax. So um, you could even do that by hand or something. So the 2500 is the last stage in this range anyway. And I'll be putting that on with this buff here. Um, so this is like a random orbital polisher. Um, it should get rid of the swirls because it doesn't actually go around in circles. Um, similar pattern to your uh, DA sanders or your orbital sanders. And in the past I've actually used DA sanders, just give them a good clean out. Um, and you get a pad to fit them. And that will, like if you don't have one of those, that'll actually work. So just clean the panels down between each stage. Um, you don't want like compound left from the previous stage contaminating. And I'm actually quite happy with how these bonnets came up. It looks uh, a quite a fair bit better than the door. So, you know, this is the kind of thing that you can achieve in a spray booth. Uh, much nicer finish, cleaner. And that's the kind of thing you can do in your garage. Uh, at the start of this video I said I was saying that I can't really see myself doing much more paintwork in here. Um, I've got access to a spray booth. A few friends with one, I've got one at work, so yeah. And most painters would probably be quite similar. They wouldn't really want to do much paintwork in their garage. But yeah, this was just for an um, idea for a video for you guys. Anyway, on to the next step. So yeah, red pad, still on the buff, the rotary buff. Um, yeah, a bit of this, see how she goes. Probably pays to give it a bit of a shake up first. I can tell straight away that this pad's a lot softer, it's got a lot more push into it. So you'd probably find that the holes in the foam are a bit smaller. So that's another important thing. You don't want to just go and use the same pad to cut, polish and wax. They do have different ones for a reason. You may have noticed I slowed the speed down a little bit for the compound uh, for the polishing stage. Just working it in, working that polish in. One more go over and then we'll wipe it off and have a look at where we're up to see how it's looking. Get one of those microfiber cloths.
Rightio, so that's the polishing stage done, or the swell removing stage. I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. I'll give you guys a look with the uh, spray torch, or the, yeah, the torch, sun gun, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I can't really see any swell marks left in there. That may change when I get it out in the sun, though. It can be uh, a little bit trickier to see any swells inside, um, even with these torches. So, yeah, that was the 2000 one step with this red pad. And next up, I'm going to be going this Rockwell thing. Not really the greatest of tools, but it's going to be fine to do uh, what I need to do next. And I'm going to be going with that 2500. As I say, I mean, I'll, I'll have a look at it. What I'll do is I'll get it outside after I do that next step. And I might find that, you know what, I want to give it a wax. Or I might find, you know, this, this uh, polish is really good. And it doesn't need a whack. Anyway, we'll have a look at it and see how it's going to come up. So it's one of those things. You probably don't need to over-apply it. You don't shouldn't really need too much on there. That's probably already too much. So I'll spread that out a bit. Some people like to put this um, the polish and stuff in the pad itself. I prefer to put it on the car. You know, it's one of those things that the details are going to be. Oh, you got to put it on the polishing pad, man. Oh, you're a hack. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Whatever. That's way too far. But yeah, I'm really happy with how the colour came up when I painted this one, so I went edge to edge on that. Yeah, I'm wrapped with it. Yeah, so the biggest uh, letdown about this tool itself is it's got a very small orbit on it. The Rook Bigfoot has got a much larger orbit on it. I don't know the exact size or the mill orbit that it has, but um, yeah, the Rook one is much better. It just, yeah, goes out a bit further. So as I say, you can actually replace this with a orbital sander. I've done that in the past, like, well, way back in the day, like, when I was still an apprentice, we were having some issues with um, swirl marks on the flat cars. You polish and polish and polish with the rotary buff, and um, you just couldn't get rid of those swirls. So uh, one of the paint reps came in and said, hey man, try this, but put it onto your DA sander. And I thought, well, that makes sense because it's not going around in circles, so it should, in theory, get rid of these swirl marks. And sure enough, tried it, and I swear by that method for years until the roof big foots came out. So yeah, just get like a DA sander, if you don't have one of these polishes, and um, get a pad that'll fit onto it. Usually just a Velcro pad, obviously clean the, um, clean the sander out. And um, yeah, you're laughing. Okay, so that should just about be okay to wipe down. You see how this stuff wipes off. I might even just grab a nice new rag there. Go yellow, pinks with girls. Well, it feels like it's wiping off nice and easily, which is what you want. For your, uh, for your last stage, especially.
you know, th those details are going to be like, oh, you have to wipe off in oval motions, or you have to wipe off in this motion. It's like, man, you do you. <laughs> I'll do, I'll do what I want with my car. Um, but yeah, that's looking fine. As I say, I might get that out in the sun and find that it does need a wax, or. But really, that feels nice and smooth. That's going to be probably just about good enough. I think so, anyway. So this is that spot repair that I did, must have been six or eight months ago now, with aerosol cans. I did just run the buff back over it again, and that's looking fine. Seriously, man, it looks a lot better than what I'd expected it was going to look. And that fade out, so I did just blend that clear through there. You can't see it. But yeah, all in all, I'm pretty happy with how this has came up. You know, it's not perfect. I learned something. Yeah, the main thing I learned was um, how to take the door handle out. I did feel like a little bit of an idiot when that fell out in my hand when I was unmasking the car. Ah, well, you live and learn. So yeah, now it's just down to cleaning. I'm going to go get the vacuum cleaner from inside, give the car a vac out while I'm at it, wipe the trims down. May as well do the whole thing. Make sure the, um, the YouTube detailers are happy with my work. Don't want to let them down. That's another thing, you know, while you've got the buff out, it might even pay to give your headlights a quick polish over. It's something that, especially here in WA, they don't really last too long, these plastic headlights. So, yeah, just keep them polished up. Right our YouTube, so yeah, up to the final stage now. Basically just a bit of an inspection in the sun and a cleanup. So, I've had a quick look at it and it looks fine. As I say, like, um, in there with the light on it, with that little sun gun type thing, you can see a few minor imperfections, but out here, it looks great. I'm actually really happy with that. The orange peel looks, um fairly similar uh, you may remember from some of the previous videos this was quite orange peely but all I needed to do was just give it basically just a, a face off and as I say just sort of meet it halfway so you don't want to fully remove all the orange peel because if you do that then that's actually going to stand out just as bad as having a thick orange peel um, because it's going to be too flat so you want it to kind of match the rest of the car yes I can say it it isn't perfect but it's um it's pretty damn good I, th I think it's acceptable something that I'm happy with on my own car anyway um and yeah that that's where the damage was on this car it was like right in the middle of that door um and I polished up the rest of this bonnet while I was at it and those compounds and the polishes are actually really quite good I'm pretty happy with it um, well, it looks good with my sunnies on, and yep, with the sunnies off, it looks quite good too. So, as I say, the next stage, maybe, um, maybe I'll wait for a couple of months when it needs another polish and just give it a wax or something like that. But, um, yeah, this is the one that uh, actually happened to me yesterday, unfortunately. Um, when it first happened, I was a little bit let down, but then, you know, slept on it, and it's like, ah, oh, well, it, it's a daily driver, that's, that's why you park it at the shopping centres, you know, so... Um, yeah, I'll just get that PDR. I touched up this bit here and I did polish it out. So I've got a friend, as I said earlier, that does do PDR work. So I'll just get him to pop that one out. And while he's at it, I might just get this one fixed as well. So yeah, at the end of the day, it's a nice, neat run around. I'll give it a wash up and give you guys a look at it when it's all washed up. Might even get it in the full sun because we're kind of half half here. Radio YouTube, so that's that job all done. I'm really happy with how it's came up. As I said, it's not 100% perfect. It's not the best work I've ever done, but for a daily driver, it looks absolutely brilliant. You know, I'm really happy with it. As I say, the closer you get, you can see a few imperfections in it, but daily use, all I'm gonna do is just walk up to that car. Well, the missus is gonna jump into it. There's no dirty dent in there anymore, and it looks nice and tidy. Um, I'm really happy with how that bonnet's polished up, looking nice, colour looks brilliant, the entire car's a very presentable unit, you know, this thing does annoy me a little bit, there's another little one in the rear door there too, but um, yeah, look, I love this car, I know it's not exactly a street machine or anything, but for a daily driver, it's just um, ideal. It's got all the good things in it, like the um, reversing cameras and that, and yeah, just a, a nice, tidy, reliable daily driver. So no more pesky stone chips in that bonnet. No more dent in that door. 
and it's looking nice and respectable so one thing i would like to say uh just before i do finish this video is um if you have one small little dent in your door that you're thinking hey i can do that at home you're probably better off just taking it to a body shop even doing the aerosol video you're probably looking at around four to five hundred dollars just of um materials and tools and equipment that you're going to need to get this uh to get that panel to looking a half reasonable um finish type thing so by the time you get your buff your compounds your paint your masking tape and all that kind of stuff you're going to be around the 500 hundred dollar mark and that's probably cutting it slim you know so especially to do this if it's just for one single panel you're probably better off just taking it to a body shop um, apart from that, if you want to do it as an ongoing thing, there's certain things that you're going to buy as, and they're just going to be once-offs and you don't have to buy them every job, you know. Obviously the compressor, that's like a one-off thing. And yeah, things like your buffs and uh, certain things that you, you are going to uh, keep. So anyway, that's a wrap for that there, Gunners. Hope you did enjoy watching it. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Uh, if you're a detailer and you think I'm an absolute hacker, don't uh, hold back. <laughs> nah, it's all good. Radio Gunners, uh, hope you did enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one. Get out there and paint some shit.